Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask the Experts. I'm Rachel Landry and today I'm joined by my colleague Jeff Hatzel, a product manager here at the company. Today, Jeff will be talking to us about watershed and water drop analysis in Global Mapper. All right, Jeff, take it away. Hi, Rachel. Thanks for having me back on Ask the Experts. Today, we're going to take a look at watershed analysis tools in Global Mapper uh, in regards to planning some stormwater management. So what we're looking at here is just some imagery surrounding, um, this is actually an old mill museum uh, that's having some flooding issues. And so we can see some erosion on the embankment. And we can also, well, we will see shortly here, uh, this is kind of like an open courtyard area and they have some, some flooding here when we have a lot of rain and runoff. And so the very first thing we did when taking a look at this project was to obtain a point cloud for the region. And so, uh, what this allows us to do and what we're going to do with it shortly uh, is to create some terrain surfaces, model some runoff, uh, and then look at some proposed drainage improvements. So if I draw uh, just a quick profile, oh, I will need to adjust my settings there. Um, let's dock this on the bottom of our screen. If I draw just a quick profile and look only at the road, what I can see is that the area in front of the building really is at a downslope. So we have a lot of water also coming down the road um, and, and leveling off kind of in this little bit of a flatter area here, right, right along here, um, where we're having those flooding problems. So the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead um, and maybe we'll take a look at our building footprint as well. So I can have a little bit clearer picture um, of where my flooding is occurring. Now, in order to mitigate this, we're talking about um, adding in a drain, so our little blue triangle, um, and then a type of drainage feature down to the river. And so what I wanna understand from this point here, uh, where is water currently flowing and then um, how will a change to the terrain surface improve or potentially improve uh, that drainage? And so what we're going to do first uh, is look at the current terrain surface as it exists now. So this is derived from the point cloud. Uh, we have not included any of the drainage uh, type improvements yet. I will use the drain though. Um, oops, selected the wrong one there. I will use the drain though as a reference for my first go at analysis. Now, what I'm going to do here is an option called tracing the flow um, from the selected point. Essentially, however and whatever water gathers at this point, whether it's rainfall, runoff coming down the road, off of other buildings, water that gets to here, where does it go? And so maybe, um, you know, I could adjust my elevation resolution and, and things of that nature if I needed to. Um, in this case, I don't, it's the default uh, that is derived from the resolution of our data set, uh, so one meter. Now, when I run this, I'll get a, a network of streams, or in this case, one uh, stream that I want to take a look at. And let me go ahead and turn that on here. And we can see that from this point, all of our water is more or less running directly right into the courtyard of this museum. What we're then going to do is take a look at this new proposed drainage feature. Because what we'll see is that it has per vertex elevations with it. So our engineers have given us elevations along the length of this feature um, as it will be decreasing in elevation from the top of the slope down to the river, hopefully to draw water down the embankment and away from both the road and the structures. We're going to use that feature now 
as part of our Turing creation. So what I can do is with this feature selected in my LiDAR point cloud, I created a new terrain surface, uh, this one here called flattened. And what we'll see as part of that is I now have a depression in my terrain. And that flattened region here represents elevations from the proposed drain site. So if I take a look at that with my profile tool, I'll be able to see now both the um, new surface, so this depth, right? This is my uh, newly proposed drain along with the current existing terrain here as well. That's the, the original surface, the unmodified surface. Now what we'll do, let's zoom back in here a little bit, and we're gonna take a look at modeling. Uh, so we're gonna, we ran the exact same flood analysis from this point. However, all we did was reference the flattened terrain surface rather than the original one. And so if I look at the runoff analysis from that proposed site, we'll see then that the water runs off from the drain down off and away from the structure and away from the road. So, you know, at this stage of an early planning process, um, what we would do is, you know, maybe you're presenting this to your engineering team or you're using this in some further modeling and simulation um, to discuss options as for what, um, you know, this water drop analysis is telling us. So I hope that was a helpful workflow, Rachel. Um, you know, great way to using hydro flattening um, and, and, and watershed analysis to start to understand uh, changes in terrain and water flow. Jeff, thanks so much for showing us that workflow. I know that our users will find it very useful. To learn more about Global Mapper and Global Mapper Pro, visit www.bloomerblegeo.com today. And as always, thank you for joining us for this episode of Ask the Experts, and we look forward to seeing you next time.